So Cheryl, somebody else is in with your name. I'm not sure who that is. I'm not sure because I am. Well, maybe they'll reveal Here. themselves. Hey, Ludlow, can you come in? Where am I now? Am I in twice or what am I doing? Do you all see me? I do. I Somebody you. else is in with your name. You want me to kill them? Um, I'm okay, I'm letting sure. guests in. It's time to let everybody in. Okay. It's like you guys are small. I can't. Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon, and welcome to South Florida, Miami Beach. We are going to start this virtual tour from the lovely campus of Florida Memorial University, uh, the country's one and only HBCU located in South Florida. And we couldn't be more um, excited and uh, proud to be able to participate in Miami Art Week uh, alongside of the art fairs that are here this week, including Art Basel, Untitled, Spectrum, Scope, um, and lots of others that I'm sure, hopefully um, you all that are all art lovers that have flocked to South Florida will be able to partake. Um, so this is a, it's a virtual tour, but it's meant to be interactive. You're welcome to turn your cameras on and come into, come on campus with us. Um, you can see that I have in the back of me, uh, the cafeteria, and in front of it, there are lovely fraternity and sorority plots. Uh, Alpha Phi Alpha's plot is on my left. Alpha Kappa Alpha's is on my right. But throughout the campus, there are these wonderful plots along with monuments and sculpture uh, that surround the wonderful grounds and this lovely body, body of water. And yes, as you can imagine, several iguanas. <laughs> are there to greet you, but they do kind of keep their place on the sort of the peripherals of, um, of the, the, the water that you see in the background. So a little bit about our run of show today. Um, we're going to start out with a little bit of an overview of Florida Memorial University. And then I um, have the privilege of introducing to you the overseer of Florida Memorial's art collection, uh, Cheryl uh, Welcher. And she's gonna give you a very exciting tour of their works of art and talk to you uh, in depth about um, some of the artists, um, the history of some of the pieces and the likes. And following the tour, We'll have a Q&A se session. So if you haven't already put your questions in the chat, feel free to do so. Um, we will also have a special guest. Uh, we call him OD. Uh, he's an old G <laughs> from Florida Memorial uh, who knows a lot about the history of the collection. So as soon as he is able to get on, we're gonna ask him to, um, to share a little bit and then um, last but not least, um, Ludlow Bailey, uh, international art curator and colleague and friend um, will join us. And in fact, Ludlow uh, is really how uh, my firm became connected to Florida Memorial many years ago. He hosted a panel there that I was a part of and it's been a wonderful relationship since then. Um, last but not least, Kimberlyn McCoy, who is a curator on my team, will help with the Q&A and make sure I don't miss any of the questions in the chat. So we don't, we want you to, to not be shy and to, you know, if you want to come in again with the cameras, if you have questions, if you want, went to an HBCU and want to give your HBCU a shout out, um, it's okay to put that in the chat too. Tell us who you are and why you're on with us and if there's any there are any goals or questions you have that you'd like to get answered. 
So with no further ado, a little bit about Florida Memorial University. So we know that there are 107 HBCUs um, that exist. And some of the initial ones that were founded many years ago are no longer in existence. Uh, there have been uh, newer ones, but the majority of the HBCUs were cr uh, created um, you know, in the 1800s. And Florida Memorial uh, University stems out of the mergers in 1941, uh, Florida Baptist Institute, which was established by the Black Baptists of Florida in Live Oak, in 1879. So that is the year that it was actually founded, uh, 1879. And, and the Florida Baptist Academy, which was established in Jacksonville, Florida in 1892 by Reverend Matthew Gilbert, JT Brown, and Sarah Ann Blocker. Those two institutions came together. Again, uh, the Florida Baptist Institute and the Florida Baptist Academy, 1879, 1892, and merged. And so in 1941, Florida Memorial College first and now university stemmed from those two mergers. And what you see today in back of me is uh, a structure on the new campus. It didn't start here in Miami Gardens. Um, again, it started, um, in the northern parts of Florida, but the new location is now in South Florida and it's South Florida's only HBCU. So that's a little bit about the history. I'm gonna share my screen if I can. And I need you all to give me a thumbs up when you can see what I am sharing. Just bear with me for a second. I wanna introduce you um, to the HBCU project, just so you'll have a little bit of perspective, perspective about why we're doing this. Why are we hosting this HBCU tour today? Um, one of the goals of my company, and by the way, if, if you don't know who I am, I um, am Valerie Cooper, and I am one of the founding, I am the founding owner of Picture That, which is an art consulting practice. Um, we have been in existence for 20 years and our latest initiative includes making accessible to the country at large, to the world at large, um, HBCU art collections nationwide. And why is that? Why is that important for us? Well, we feel that the, some of the, the, the richest history about the African American culture, about persons in America uh, that reflect the African diaspora, uh, the works and the objects that reflect uh, our people are largely housed behind the museum doors, the gallery doors, of our HBCU institutions. Our HBCU institutions were some of the first institutions who were willing to house, to exhibit, to support, to patronize uh, Black artists. And so if you think of some of the first institutions that were founded, in fact, the very first African-American museum founded was Hampton University's museum. Um, of which we will have a tour of that on February 12, 2022. So stay tuned for that. Um, but if you look at my screen, give me a thumbs up if you can see my screen. I am sharing these uh, 16 HBCUs that we've been able to onboard to HDAP to introduce their collections to you, to America, to the world thus far. Um, and you can just imagine all of the rich history that lies in the art collections of these institutions, very important history that didn't always make it to the textbooks for students in grades K through 12, did not always make it to the textbooks for college, community college students or college students or PhD students. So how could one have an art history degree with major chapters about the African-American art history uh, being omitted. So a goal is to correct the 
um, omission of this very important um, portion of America's history um, story and to make it more inclusive, to make it more complete. So that really is the primary goal of, of the HBCU Digital Art Project, and we call it HDAP for short, because it's, you know, we, we, we just need an acronym or, or a nickname for most things. So with no further ado, today, again, since it's Miami week, since it's our Basel, we decided to have the very first preview um, of an HBCU art collection during the art fair week. And what better collection to preview than South Florida's very own Florida Memorial University's collection. So Cheryl, are you ready to come and help us understand you are on mute about your collection? And is H, I wanna make sure that um, HD is not, he hasn't joined us yet, but as soon as he's on, we'll ask him to bring greetings and remarks as well. But Cheryl, if you want to take yourself off mute, I'm off. and I am going to scroll down. Okay, can everybody now see the Florida Memorial? Cheryl, can you see the Florida Memorial? I see the Florida Memorial background. I guess okay, I perfect. So Cheryl Wilner, Wilchner is the, um, again, the, the director of the library, the overseer of the collection. And um, I would like to, um, Cheryl, ask you to come in and just let me know when you want me to advance from one slide to the next and uh, you can take it away. Okay, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Cheryl Wilcher, Director of Library Services here at the Nathan W. Collier Library. Thank you for joining us today as we make history by being the first, I believe, right, uh, HBCU to partner with at Art Basel, Miami Beach, and HDAP um, by touring and sharing uh, a little bit of our university history and art collections. Um, we can go to the next slide, um, which This is uh, our, our Florida Memorial University mascot, which is at the entrance, entrance of our campus uh, as a welcoming piece to our campus. Um, our mascot is the lion and he's affectionately named as Nathan. And we can go to the next slide. The next slide. Okay. And this um, maintaining and preserving the legacy is a wall created um, of our presidents, past presidents, um, from 1879 up until I think 2014. Um, we can go to the next slide. And our current president, Dr. Jaffis Hardrick, uh, who came aboard, I think, 2016 uh, and still remains today. Um, that's just a picture of him. Next. Okay. Lift Every Voice and Sing is a sculpture, a bust, I would say, um, by Edward E. Parker. Um, it's also on display here in the library. Next slide. And this is a painting by Oscar, Oscar Thomas uh, of J. Roseman Johnson and J. Weldon Johnson. I'm not sure who the third person is on this painting. However, it is a part of our collection of the Roseman Brothers. Next slide. The recreation. This was a little bit of a task for me because I was under the impression that it was by Mark Segal. However, I think he just was the inspiration of her recreation of his creation piece. Um, but it's, um, uh, I wanna say it's uh, a, a 10 foot uh, statue that sits on the second floor of our library uh, and for good reason, because it's a big piece that is very um, heavy and has been there for some time. It was actually donated to us by Rose Altman in 1969. 
Okay, the next piece. And Dr. Carl Crawford is a uh, collection that we have here um, in our um, art collections. Uh, Dr. Carl M. Crawford, who was the former college administrator, provost of Broward Community College South Campus to be exact, um, was a skilled drawer, sculptor, painter, and lecturer of African art and culture. He also played a small role in the film Striptease alongside um, Burt Reynolds, as well as in the film Blood and Wine with uh, Jack Nicholson. He was a stevedore in that part. Uh, he once served as chair of Old Dillard Museum Foundation and made the request according to his last will and testimony that his African-American art objects be donated to Florida Memorial University and FAMU University, well, Florida A&M University, uh, two HBCU institutions. Okay, so the next slide. Oh, these are just a few of his pieces. I don't have titles for um, his art. I'm searching for it desperately, but I have a few in our collection. Well, more than a few, there are quite a few, but all of these are uh, uh, objects and pieces of his collection that was donated. And that's a painting that was also donated by him. Okay, and now we have the Benny Andrews. Benny Andrews, um, no, that's a Benny Andrews. Benny Andrews was a renowned American realist, <laughs> uh, born in Prairie View, Georgia in uh, 1930s during the period better known as the Harlem Renaissance. He matriculated at Fort Valley State College. However, he transferred to the Chicago Art Institute receiving the Bachelor of Fine Arts degree in 1958. He also attended the University of Chicago. In addition to his numerous exhibits, including works hanging in Metropolitan Museum of Art, Art Institute of Chicago and Studio Museum in Harlem, Memphis Brooks Museum of Art, as well as the Ogden Museum of Southern Art, Andrews taught art at Queens College, New York, and directed the visual arts for the National Endowment for the Arts in Washington, D.C. He was the father of two sons, Christopher and Thomas, and a daughter, Julia, and his wife, and his first wife, photographer, Mary Ellen Smith. Um, Andrews married artist Nene Humphrey in 1986, and he was made spiritual, he made his spiritual transition in New York in 2006 at the age of 76 years old. And the next slide will show the next art piece, this art piece, which is okay. The this piece is titled uh, "Reading of the Wheel" uh, from the Hickory Chair series. Uh, it's mixed media, oil and collage on paper, um, which was received to us by a generous gift. Um, from the United Negro College Fund. Okay, and the next piece. Next slide, please. And this was, is this the piece? Okay. Okay, the next, this one is the English Class B, uh, a 2005 painting from his Langston Hughes series. And this is a, a mixed media of oil and collage on paper as well. Okay, we'll go to the next, next slide. This is a piece uh, titled Thou Shall Not Kill, which is um, on display in our Trayvon Martin Foundation Center. Uh, which is um, shared here in the library on the set on the third floor of the library. Um, I don't have much information on the artist or the uh, medium of this, uh, but it is there, the Thou Shall Not Kill. And I guess it's somewhat in honor to uh, Trayvon Martin. Next piece. 
Okay, this is a part of a uh, collection, the Dari Artist Collection. And this is a piece called Endless Possibilities, which got its inspiration from a Nelson Mandela. Um, well, this is a quote which states, it always seems impossible until it's done. And um, that is one of her pieces and where she got her inspiration to um, paint him from. Okay, the next slide. is another Dari artist collection piece from um, Dari Chaplin. Um, Dari Chaplin, she was born in Johannesburg, South Africa. Um, she now lives on a farm close to Cape Town, South Africa. Uh, she exhibits regularly and has been commissioned to do works for many important sites, including parliament offices and museums, as well as corporate, uh, corporate and private works. Dari enjoys depicting the humorous side of life as she sees it in rural settings as well as cities. Her paintings range from 11 by 14 to 4 by 6, and her preferred method is palette knife. Dari's work is regularly featured in print media and on television. So this piece, which is uh, Dr. King, um, is titled, okay, are we at Maya? Okay, Maya. Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. This piece is called Scans for a Brighter Future. It's titled Scans for a Brighter Future. Uh, and the inspiration is stated here that no matter the pigment color or melanin quantity, the skin is just merely the cover. And who is to say a blue skin, for example, is more entitled than a green or purple skin? So I guess she got her inspiration from some quote from uh, Martin Luther King as well. And so even though we face the difficulties of today and tomorrow, uh, I still have a dream. It is the, a dream deeply rooted in the American dream, which is a quote Martin Luther King, by Martin Luther King. Okay, and the next piece is a piece that she got her inspiration from both men, Nelson Mandela, as well as Martin Luther King and their love for music. So she, uh, created this piece as a um, an honor to them and their love for music. And she quotes here, I can just find that right quick, which is all, it's titled The Flute from her 2005 collection. Um, it's bronze on granite and her inspiration, uh, she, uh, like I said, she MLK loved classical and liturgical music and Madiba is who she refers to Nelson Mandela as in this piece. So it's to, in honor to MLK and Madiba. Next piece. Oh, that's the flute, Dari. Okay. And this is what is on display now in our archival gallery. Uh, the Barbara J. Jordan Commissioner of Excellence Collection, uh, where we have, um, a collection that's it was on display today. Barbara J. Jordan, who has touched many of us in some way through her labor, learning, leadership, and legacy, um, dedicated and committed to the institution span over 20 years. Um, most recently, she has supported the renovation of Florida Memorial University's Library Archival Gallery, and she also has donated her career to the her career collection of memorabilia and artifacts to our university. Uh, Barbara Jordan, Commissioner of Excellent Collection, contains several pieces and a wealth of information documenting the progression of a commissioner of excellence. And again, this is what's on display in our archival gallery right now. It's on exhibit. The Trayvon Martin Foundation, housed on the third floor of the Nathan W. Collier Library has several pieces, her, uh, not her, Trayvon's mother, Sabrina Fulton, is an alumni of Florida Memorial University. And um, she does many tours and community activities here on the campus. And this is just a few of the pieces that are on display in that area. So the next slide. That's a yeah, and this is a um, 
a copy of her book cover, uh, the parents of Trayvon Martin's book, uh, Rest in Power. Next uh, slide. Again, that's another uh, painting by, I'm not sure who it's by, but it's uh, on display in the foundation. Susie C. Holly. Susie C. Holly was actually a, I'll just have her. Um, Susie C. Holly was selected by the city of Fort Lauderdale as its citizen of the year in 1979. Dr. Holly was a trustee of Florida Memorial College held by the presidency of the uh, General Convention of Baptist Women for many years. She co-founded the Cradle Nursery at Piney Grove Baptist Church and served on the nursery's board of directors. The university's chapel is named in her honor. Okay, next slide, please. Next slide, please. Barrington Irving, a Jamaican-born American, graduate of Florida Memorial University, previously held the record for the youngest person to pilot a plane around the world solo at the age of 22, a feat he accomplished in 2007. He is also the first black person and first Jamaican to accomplish this feat. This photo is by John Ross. Next slide. Okay. It goes back to a hotel. All right, so what a wonderful, wonderful tour that was, Cheryl. Thank you so much for that overview. Um, lots and lots of rich history uh, on the campus of Florida Memorial. And there are so many questions in the chat right now. Um, hopefully we'll have a chance to get to them all. But as you were going through that, um, so many people were asking questions. We have someone waving with. That's know, maybe, OD. That is OD. Okay. Yes. I kept saying to Ledla, Ledla, was that OD? Is that OD? Um, OD, we are happy that you are here. And I've already said OD is Florida Memorial University's OG. <laughs> you, <Yes. laughs> so you're the real OG in terms of this art collection. And before we, um, you're on mute, but before we start the Q and A, um, I'm gonna ask you to come in and br just bring greetings, but know that the questions, Cheryl, um, have a lot to do with why some of the art that was presented was actually relevant to Florida Memorial University. So for example, the Lift Every Voice and Sing sculpture, why? why is that on your campus and we 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 believe that the original composer uh of the music and the lyrics of the song we believe they may have been professors there or students there so we're going to want to know more about uh who they are the johnson brothers that actually um created what is now known as our national negro anthem uh there's also questions about why is trayvon martin significant at your university. You mentioned his mother was an alumni. Um, we know that the incident took place in Florida, but was it near the, the campus? So that's a question. Um, questions about the Benny Andrew pieces. So um, I'm gonna ask first um, OD to come in and OD, you're gonna have to tell us what your real name is. And then following his remarks, We'll start the Q&A and ask both Kim McCoy and Ludlow to help out. So, OD, can you take yourself off mute? We know you're Q. You are putting that Omega Sci-Fi 
she uh, your emblems and and your camera i don't think he's doing it on purpose but or, or maybe <laughs> let's see big part of hbcu life is greekdom um and he's trying to take himself off mute oh can you hear me now we can hear you now good afternoon and good please... afternoon to you all so it's such an outstanding presentation Yes, yes, yes. Now I understand you are um, the historian in terms of the collection. I know a lot about its beginnings, its foundings. How did this collection come about and what was your role? Well, uh, with the staff, especially uh, uh, Cheryl Wilcher and Francis Baugh, uh, uh, the space really was storage room. So we put our heads together and say, what are we going to do with this uh, unrepresented space? And we need to do more things with it. And Cheryl and uh, Francis Barr said, let's think about a gallery. And I said, OK, let's do it. And they say, when? I say, right now. And we did. We started at that moment. So we went throughout the entire university collecting art and uh, art and art products materials. And that's how we developed the Museum Art Gallery. We also went in um, closets, pulling out old um, desk tables, pictures. Um, we did that, we called community members and we knew the value of art. We knew the value of creating a resting place for our culture and our custom and our traditions, and especially that rich tradition of Florida Memorial University. And we had the okay of our past president, Dr. Artis, as well as our past associate provost, Dr. Denise Caldwell. So they were all supportive uh, we invited members of the community in, and we had monthly exhibits. We also connected with the United Negro College Fund, and they put on loan the work of Benny Andrews. And our students at Florida Memorial, they painted the room. We put up lights with the staff, museum lights, and we had almost a zero, zero budget, and we made it work. Wonderful, wonderful. And and what is your role now on campus? Are you still um, affiliated with the university? Are you still working with the collection? Yes, I am. I am a professor of music. I teach piano and voice at Florida Memorial University in the Weldon Johnson Music Building. The Weldon B. Johnson. That's um, right. Weldon. And that's one of the um, really wonderful things I feel about HBCUs. Many of the buildings are named after famous African-American scholars and authors and writers. And, and why, do you know why? Tell us why your Performing Arts Center is named after Lou Rawls. Was he a Floridian? Uh, was he- Lou Rawls, Lou Rawls, uh, Lou Rawls was a, a philanthropist. Oh. as well as an outstanding musician who understood and was able to anticipate the needs and the desires of Florida Memorial University. And that's usually why buildings are named after people. That <laughs> philanthropy works every time. But I didn't it's know done. if he was interested in the university because he attended or he was raised in the area um, often that's what drives a philanthropist to support an institution. They have some sort of affinity or special connection with the institution. Who was your art department building named after? The um, art department building is in the same building as the music because that entire department is called visual and performing arts. I understand, I understand. So, Cheryl, yes. OD, um, we have several questions in the chat. 
And I'm gonna ask um, Kim to come in with the first few that have to do really about that lift every voice and sing sculpture, I believe, because there are several that have asked since that question came in and people are curious on the history of that. Kim, what, what are the questions that you have teed up? And hello. Hello. Thank you so much, Cheryl and Emily for the very interesting history. Um, so the questions behind the lift every voice and sing sculpture, um, we heard that it was by Edward E. Parker. So we just want to know, um, is there a story behind it or anything like that? And this came from me. This question came from me and Beverly Jordan Murphy. Um, from my understanding, the uh, Lift Every Voice and Sing sculpture came um, about by um, its uh, significance to the Negro National Anthem, uh, which we're back um, years ago. Uh, then President uh, Nathan W. Collier uh, recruited elite faculty, including Jay Roseman, uh, Jonathan, who while employed at Florida Baptist Academy assisted his brother James Wells, Weldon Johnson, uh, who were uh, Dr. Collier's lifelong friend and college roommate uh, in composing the Black National Anthem, uh, Lift Every Voice and Sing. And for this reason, the university is recognized today as the birthplace of Lift Every Voice and Sing. And that, rep that piece represents them. The brother. The, the brothers who uh, wrote and composed the uh, Lift Every Voice and Sing. Okay, perfect. Thank you so much. Hopefully that answers Beverly's question. Um, I have many questions actually. Um, I'll go back to my first question, which is about the artwork. It's about the mascot and it's about, you know, is there a significance behind the name Nathan the lion? Um, I'm going to say Nathan is uh, significant because of Nathan being Nathan White Collier, whom the library is named after, and right. the longest running, uh, reigning president to date. Um, so there are many things that was um, named in his honor, and I think that's one. Okay, perfect. And then also um, about the Benny Andrews artworks, um, can you tell us how FMU acquired those works, those two works by Benny Andrews? Well, do you want to answer that one? Yes. Um, I had visited the United Negro College Fund uh, in Washington, D.C., and I spoke with Ms. Luana, one of the uh, scholars and employees. And we were discussing uh, our project at Florida Memorial University. And then um, she told me about the collection and she said that the Ben Andrew collection was going everywhere. And we, I said, can, can we get a couple of his uh, compositions? And she said, surely, she said, which one do you want? And uh, she said, but first of all, we want to know if you have an art gallery. I say we most certainly do. And um, she placed them alone. And, and that's how we got it. And uh, between Cheryl, Wiltshire, and Ms. Barr, we got together and we further carried out the process with designing a resting place only for the works of Benny Andrews. And we gave so much attention and recognition to the United Negro College Fund. And Florida Memorial University, like the other ones, we have original compositions. These are, they are not copies. They are original. And what we did do, in fact, where Benny Andrews' uh, section is, in fact, his complete museum there, I sacrificed my office space and we turned that into the Ben Andrew collection. 
Oh, wow. Wow. And, and Ms. Wilton and I, all of us, we moved into another storage room so that the museum gallery would grow. It was a real sacrifice getting the collection and also relocating ourselves in that wonderful library. Excellent, excellent. Thank you so much. There is a follow up question to the Benny Andrews. I don't know if either of you can answer this. Um, I mean, I, I actually have a follow up question and that is, you know, you mentioned that um, the representative from the, um, the who was it who um, donated? You the your United Negro College one, Miss Luana. Right, right. You mentioned that she allowed you to choose. And I was wondering what what was the idea behind choosing those specific two works by Benny Andrews for FMU? Because of those two collections, in my opinion, were just outstanding because they were not only um, paintings and, and drawings, but he also included collages. Mm -hmm. Both collections are actually collages of his work. Okay. Yeah, you can see the hand stitch. You can touch it. You can feel the texture in it. You can see the three dimensions in that particular, those two pieces. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to come in for a second. Um, Beverly Jordan Murphy is asking if there's any way to get prints of Andrews Benny's work. Beverly, absolutely. In fact, you and I are going to meet at the convention center during Art Basel on Saturday. And there are several gallerists and dealers that represent Benny, uh, who I'd, I'd love to introduce you to. My company can certainly help you make those connections. Um, we are Picture That Consultants, and that's one of the things we'd love to help you do. Um, the other question is from Ledlow Bailey. And since he's on camera, I'm going to ask him to come in and Say hello and greet everyone. And for ask sure, for sure. And Nadia Fatah, please join us to take turn your camera on if you are so inclined to do so. And everybody else that wants to come in and say hello. This is meant to be interactive and intimate. So no pressure, but you're welcome. So Ledlow. Wow. OD, how are you, man? Ledlow, I am doing very well. I haven't seen you in donkey years. This is true. You know, you're. I, I'm hearing that you're living the good life and still teaching. I mean, that's really admirable. <laughs> but but I have to say that I, I I like Benny Andrews' work, and I would love to see us think about if it's just even, um, you know, me on panel discussions, right? Is kind of trying to organize a little panel around uh, uh, Benny Andrews because. Uh, he's one of my favorites, no question about it. I mean, um, and I tend to champion African-American artists who uh, come from a space that's not necessarily dominated by uh, university training, right? He had a, 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 a soulful way of expressing himself through art. And uh, he's one of those that deserves much more research and, uh, and much more celebration. Uh, so that's that's my comment. But in terms of the question, I for some reason thought you guys had more uh, pieces of Benny Andrews. Oh, the university has only two original compositions. Okay, yeah. Now Cheryl has available a, a, a wonderful banner that with his work on it that is now on that banner, it makes it um, a public domain. And it can be used, but as far as getting a copy, you will have to uh, contact the United Negro College Funds, and they do have prints available. Wow. All right. So on a copyright basis also, can you, do, does the university uh, have the right to make copies of these works? The do university you, do you... does not have the right at no. all. Okay. okay. No, but on that particular poster where we advertise that Ms. Wiltshire has, it is public domain. 
All right, that's good to know. Very good to know. But it, it, I, I'm sure that if we use it in terms of public, uh, of showing it to the entire public, a print, we can use it through fair usage. All that right, will protect you. As long as it's in good taste, uh, nothing derogatory, it can be used as fair usage. Thanks. Awesome. Good to know. Good to With know. With the copyright law. Okay. So and, I think and Valerie, we, may I jump yes. in and just say something that um, OD is the guy that uh, really twisted my, almost broke my hand in, in doing the panel discussions, the Basel ones over there. <laughs> yes, <laughs> but it was but so much fun. I mean, we really had fun putting it together. And, you know, I'm glad to hear you're still at school because they need you. And I, I have to say that one of the most inspiring things that uh, OD introduced me to were the students you know he was all into the students and he had a lot of when you went to his office it was like a, a political forum you know all the kids getting together and talking about all kinds of issues and some of those kids i've kept in touch with you know so, go ahead, there Mary. is no no better uh gathering spot melting spot and place of inspiration than an HBCU campus. I did not attend Florida Memorial, but I did attend Morgan State University and it was life-changing um, for me. I'm sure it was, it's life-changing for those that are attending Florida Memorial as well as most of the other HBCUs because there are people like OD who are yes, there as a professor paid to do his job, but they take it a step further. Oh, they take it many steps further. They become parental figures. They become coaches, disciplinaries. Very true. They will put you in your place like an old a relative, an auntie, an uncle. <laughs> and, you know, they would tell me at Morgan, you're not graduating from here and embarrassing us. You are going to learn this English and you're going to stay here forever. <laughs> so you found a way to become an, you became an A student with grammar, with mathematics, with calculus. Um, because they also, you know, convinced you that once you graduated with your HBCU degree, you could go anywhere and do anything. So it was reinforcing what your parents told you because they told us the same thing. Um, so I am extremely um, fond of not only my HBCU, but all of the HBCUs because they do play a very special, unique role and the lives of the students that they educate. The other thing that's really interesting about HBCUs are the unique characteristics that they display relative to the neighborhoods they're placed in relative to the African-American culture. So if you wanna learn about life in Miami Gardens and South Florida, and down here in Basel, I'm learning, I'm learning about the African-American sections. I'm not sure if I say Overton or Overtown, Overtown. but Overtown, I do know that is where a lot of the art started. Little Haiti, huge influx of people from the Caribbean here, from Africa here. In fact, um, we're down to our last seven minutes and I'm gonna ask um, Kim to ask one more question. And then Ludlow, if you could come in and tell us a little bit about uh, Basel. And um, you have a interesting panel that's coming up. Yes. I want people on the call to understand that we're here um, to for two reasons. We're here because South Florida is the major is a major destination spot globally um, for people in the art world. Um, we have been hosting Basel. Uh, tours since its existence, Ludlow, myself, and other um, persons from the African diaspora who are art professionals. We feel it belongs to us as much as it does everybody else. And over the years, we have really made a major footprint um, in terms of African diaspora-based activities, tops, panels, uh, having artists come down, more galleries and dealers are coming down. So Kim, a couple more questions um, for Cheryl about the collection, and then I'm gonna 
ask Ledlow to tell us if we haven't done it yet, what must we do see before the show, the, the art fair is actually over on Sunday? Okay, great. Um, the last question, this is a good question to kind of sum everything up. Um, and that is Cheryl or anyone else who would like to chime in. What do you, FMU, hope to accomplish with the art collection in the future? Are there any specific goals? For, for me, um, as the library director and of the collection, is to fill a void in connecting and engaging students via historical evidence uh, of the culture, custom, and traditions of Florida Memorial University in a tangible manner. Wonderful. All Beautiful. Right. Okay, and hopefully we'll be able to, um, we have, are recording this and we plan to share your story and your collection and we will have more of these sessions. And as Ledlow said, start honing in on some of the artists, on the Minnie Andrews story, on the Lift Every Voice and Sing Brothers. I'm sure most people on this call did not know that that song was composed by persons who were affiliated with Florida Memorial University. So now you know. Um, so thank you again, Cheryl, tremendously for coming in and sharing with us today. And oh, Mr. Yeah. Bailey. Thank you. Thank you for having me. God, this is exciting. Hi, Cheryl. How are you? Hi, how are you, Lalo? Yeah, yeah. Excellent, excellent. We've worked together also yes. on putting together panels, right? Yeah. Uh, and you're 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 a wonderful person to work with. And I'm I'm very happy that you were able to connect with Valerie to make this happen. Yes, right? thank you for the connect. She's yeah, amazing. Sister now. <laughs> yeah. And Valerie's just uh, off the top. She's like, you know, super excellent. I mean, I love working with her. And yes. we've done a, a lot of things together. We over the years, over, over the, the years. years, over yeah. the years, yes. So um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take the time to first tell you about my panel, and then we'll get into what I'm learning about Basel, right? So every year uh, for 12 years, because this is the 12th edition of a panel I've been putting together called um, the the Kata Art Basel panel on contemporary African diaspora art. Now, the quick story is that I fell into the art business by really helping a New York artist, Eli Kins, who's done very well. And actually he's been in our sessions at uh, Florida Memorial. Um, well, Yale educated brother from Cincinnati, Ohio. Um, I, he, I was helping him to kind of do his, his thing. Um, in Florida, and then I also took him to Europe uh, to do shows. And before you know it, bang, I'm in the business. But uh, one of the things that I enjoy about art is that it really uh, helps us to look at the humanities broadly. And as a Pan-Africanist, I am very interested in kind of talking about the narrative of Black people on earth. And I'm also very interested in getting the diaspora together to share ideas about our different experiences. Because in my opinion, as long as you are a black person, you're an African. And, 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 and what's important for us to start to do is to break down the barriers in terms of how we view ourselves. Because when you look at it at the end of the day, for us to be more empowered, I think we have to come together. And so, one of the things that I've enjoyed most about putting these panels together is getting the diaspora together. And I always try to make sure there's a representative from Africa, the Caribbean, Europe, and the United States, uh, people of African descent. Um, and that in itself will get a diverse African diaspora community together. And I, I'm telling you that Basel has really changed the game as far as getting black people from all over the world uh, coming to Miami and doing some pretty dynamic things. Yesterday, we were at a, uh, a, a, a panel discussion that was put together by uh, a Nigerian young lady who's well known for what's called the Africa Soft uh, Power Project. And what they're looking at is how can we use the creative industries 
to really one, change the narrative about black people in the world and to help us to uh, gain more political, uh, spiritual and economic empowerment from our creat uh, creative talent. Because one of the things that's really true about Basel now is we're dominating um, the, the, the presence certainly at the main show. And, you know, this has been going on for a good eight years. Would you agree with me on that, Valerie? Yes, absolutely. You, you, you absolutely. go to Art Basel now, and in the beginning, if you, you would see maybe work from Basquiat and maybe uh, Romero uh, Bearden, mm -hmm. now you have all this young talent that's uh, really uh, dominating the, 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 the art market because the, the, the Af contemporary African diaspora art is the fastest growing aspect of the contemporary art market. And this year, you owe it to yourself to get a copy of the Art Basel issue because you'll see what I'm talking about. You know, there, 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 are, uh, there are articles about um, Toyin uh, Jones, a, a Nigerian guy that's really doing very well. Um, uh, Simmons did the, she edited that particular edition. Uh, uh, she's also an African-American artist. So the, the, there's an African-American artist who's on the cover of Basil again. This is like the fifth year that this has happened, right? It's amazing how, um, you know, overwhelmingly uh, inclusive the fair has been over the years. But tell us where we can, we, we're down to our last minute. And well, I want to be respectful I, I, of time. Tell us where we can, how we can tune in to your panel. Is it this Sunday? It's this Sunday. You can go to kata.us, which is one of my main Can uh, you website. put that in the chat? Yes, I certainly can. Okay, um, awesome. Uh, yeah, and you, you'll see the information there. But it's been published uh, on, on Eventbrite on Facebook. If you do a search for the 12th annual Kata panel discussion on contemporary African diaspora art, you can certainly find it. But I think the easiest thing for me is to put the URL for kata.us. And all you need to do is go to kata, 20, um, kata 2021, and you'll be able to, to get the information. Perfect. Um, perfect, yeah, so, perfect. So hopefully yeah. um, the listening audience will um, Tune, it's a virtual, another virtual, you know, yeah. a lot of good has come out of uh, the pandemic and that we now are able to navigate the globe and be in rooms that we ordinarily could not be in, in a virtual fashion. So th this is a, a virtual opportunity to have yet another Basel experience. Um, Kata, again, contemporary African diaspora artwork. Is that what it stands yes, for? Yes, yes, exactly. Ludlow is a pro. He's been hosting his panel for many, many years. I just want to close out by saying, um, Cheryl, yeah. I can't thank you enough. You you got my call. Let, well, first I got the text from Ludlow. How do I how do I reach her? Ludlow's like, this is how you reach her. <laughs> we called, you answered, you delivered. Uh, hopefully this will be the first of many tours that we give um, highlighting your current collection. And as you grow your collection, we can talk about the direction of the future of Florida Memorial University's collection because you learned so much about an organization, um, universities, corporations, hospitals and the like by examining the objects that are in their collections. And you have both African-American works and a very nice African collection that was donated. And we hope to help you uh, get to learn more about the countries those objects are from, sort of the meaning behind the mask and the, the other figures, including the works we found on campus that were really, really awesome. I also want to acknowledge um, there are a few art, publications that are really important. Um, one is Black Art in America that's produced by Najee Dorsey. Um, please, you know, check him out, check out his website. He is really working hard to make sure that we uh, historically are documenting our artists and, and artwork. Mm -hmm. Also Pigment International Magazine 
Pat Patricia and her team are uh, another major force to be reckoned with in terms of documenting our story. Um, and last but not least, Culture Type is a email newsletter I follow that also teaches me a lot. I don't know the owner. I don't know if she's here. Ledlow, is she, do no, you? Valerie's not here, but I, I, yeah, okay. she's not here this year. I didn't see her. Just but want to drop that name. Yeah. yeah. Um, because they like picture that, uh, <laughs> like Ledlow's firm. We've all taken this um, assignment in our own hands to help forward the agenda to make the African American art um, world. Uh, more inclusive, more expansive, more uh, known about, talked about, read about. And so I'm getting a little choked up because it's really um, near and dear to my heart. But I want to just say on behalf of my partner, Anthony Green, and the entire picture that team, Kimberly McCoy, uh, Sarah Lopez, Josepher, and others, um, thank you for allowing us to bring HDAP, the Historically Black college and Colleges and Universities Digital Art Project to America, to the world. Thank you for embracing it. And thank you for joining this talk today. Have a great thank afternoon. You. Thank you. Thank you. Enjoy. Take care, everyone. Take care. Okay. Bye. Bye.